Well, good evening, laddies, lasses, and lassos. Welcome to the Click You Smell Absolutely Astounding today. And don't let anyone else tell you otherwise, especially you, Sam. Oh, yes, indeed, Sam. You smell so good today. I see you there, Sam, working on your little edits, Sam, while smelling so incredibly nice. Yes, indeed, Sam. Shout out to Sam, the editor. Hell yeah. (laughs) So today... We're going to do something absolutely beautiful. I found a subreddit that people recommended to me that is called r slash am I the butthole. And we are going to play bingo with r slash am the butthole. Am I the butt bingo? Yippee. You the butt or you not the butt. And if it is butt and by bingo. Woo. Um, Reddit today click tricked his audience into believing they were going to play bingo. Is he the butthole? Yes. Okay, no, but let me know in the comments if I should try to make a bingo with the subreddit. Because I haven't read it enough to know, like, enough of the common things to make a bingo card. But I would like to try in the future. Let me know if you're excited. But anyway, let's get into the buttholeness. Yes, and I can't wait to get into this butthole. Innuendo intended. <laughs> Am I the butthole for laughing when my son came home from meeting his girlfriend's parents because he chose to behave like he does at home? Oh, this is gonna be juicy, isn't it? My son burps a lot while eating. I have tried telling him multiple times that it is rude. I have told him to slow down so he doesn't swallow air with his food. I've told him that is disgusting. I can like partially relate to this. My table manners went to absolute crap during COVID because I never actually went out to eat with people. So after like a couple of years, I was like, oh, I forgot how to be a decent human. Anyway, let's keep reading, shall we? My wife will instantly jump in to defend him. She will say that's just the way he is and it's not his fault. The thing is, he can control himself when I remind him. He just chooses not to. He just went on a date with his girlfriend last night and she tore him a new butthole. It was the first time meeting her parents since they live in another city. They went out to a fancy restaurant and he burped all the way through supper. He came home almost in tears from her chewing him out for behaving like a jackpot in front of her family. I heard him telling my wife about it and I laughed. She asked what was so funny and I reminded them both that I had tried dozens, if not hundreds of times to teach him table manners and he rejected them and she protected him. I said that now he is a grown man and he had to learn the hard way. They both think she overreacted and that I am the butthole for being amused by his experience. Not the butthole. I also laughed at this. How old is your son? Doesn't matter either way. There are times for this behavior. Dinner at a restaurant is not one of those times. Girlfriend did not overreact. Hopefully he learns a valuable lesson from this. 22? 20 goddamn two? I was expecting like 16 or something. Not the butthole, OP. That is hilarious. I mean, if you're sitting at home with a beer and a burger watching a football game with a bro, no one's gonna care if you let a burp rip. Like, it's fine. But if you're sitting (laughs) at a fancy restaurant with your partner's family... No! No, you're 22 years old, goddammit! I think there's a really like nice moral to be had here, though there's quite often times in life where you can learn lessons the hard way or the easy way. And if you ignore it too many times, the easy way, the only way that's left is the hard way, which is this one. The consequences of this are much greater and more painful than just being at home in the safety of your own house and being like, hey, maybe you should try not to burp all the time. <laughs> that is so stupid. Oh, beautiful. Not the butthole. Let's bring out the bingo cup for not. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's not, not for this video, Sad, sadly. I keep teasing you, though. Are you looking forward to that bingo yet? (laughs) Marketing. Am I the bottle for saying I will be driving myself and paying for my own room on the upcoming family vacation so I won't have to be a babysitter? I, 23M, was repeatedly stuck playing the part of helper and babysitter on family outings. I had to move out of my parents' home because I kept being forced to help watch my three nephews. Last year, we took a family vacation in summer to the coast. I rode along with my parents and they paid for my hotel room. Only, I had to share the room with three rowdy boys because my sister and her husband wanted a room for themselves. No way, you're like 23 and you get stuck in the kids' room as a forced babe. No, come on. Don't get me wrong, being a babysitter for nephews and stuff can be a lot of fun, but it also kind of needs to be on your own terms, right? You're, ma- you're doing someone a favor. This isn't supposed to be forced. <laughs> 
I was promised time to do my own things on the vacation, but instead I ended up having to help out with the kids. I complained to everyone about it and was reminded I was there for free. If that was communicated beforehand, I guess it makes sense. Like, hey, you get to travel with us for free because you're helping out with the kids. But if you're expecting a paid family vacation and you just get stuck in a room with, with rowdy kids when the parents themselves don't want the kids in their own room... Yeah, weird vibes. And then we pretty much just did only one thing I wanted to do, which was tour an art gallery. I like doing this whenever I'm at the coast, but the kids find it boring. This year my parents have a beach trip planned for June, and they assumed I would be riding along the same way as last year. But I refused. I said I'd be driving myself and paying for my own hotel stay to have my own room. My parents were shocked and tried to remind me of the cost. I said it was no worry. I've got a good job and a decent running car. I can more than afford it. But that's when the buts started. I stated the previously listed things as why I'll be driving myself and paying for myself. I want to be able to enjoy this vacation as an adult and not be treated like a child like last year. My parents told my sister, and she called to blow up at me that I'll be ruining the vacation if I'm off doing my own thing while she has to wrangle her three boys. Well, you're the one who chose to have kids, no? Not, <laughs> not your brother. This is not your free babysitter. Hire a babysitter then. <laughs> what? I ended up yelling at her that last year all she did was rope me into her mess. I didn't really get to do much of anything that I wanted to do. And I was treated like the bad guy for wanting to just go to an art gallery. I am a grown man. I deserve my own vacation too. Now my sister is not speaking to me, and my parents are still trying to convince me to just ride with them to keep the peace. I am still refusing, but the pressure is getting to me. Am I the butthole for not giving in? I know they will have a pretty hard time when they won't have another person there to help. Like traveling with family and kids is of course easier and can be a really fun deal, right? Because you have multiple people that can take care of the kids, you can like bounce them between you to babysit and that kind of stuff. But being expected to share a room with like kids and nephews when you're an adult yourself and the parents don't want to buy a second room for the kids or stay with them themselves that means you will have no personal space during the whole vacation i think that's where like it crosses a line at least in my opinion you know helping out with taking care of kids is fun it's fine it can be part of vacation it's good advice but you need to have your own space that's the difference you can't be crowd into like like the kids room with them <laughs> what <laughs> Edit. It's been barely an hour since I posted, but my sister is apparently a Reddit lurker in the mornings, and she saw my post. Not only is she furious with me, but she's also upset no one in the comments is siding with her. <laughs> to make it short, she went on a big rant about how it's so hard to be a parent to triplets. I can imagine, yeah, and especially if they're triplets, because then you have them all at the same time, and you're not really planning and having, like, one kid at a time when the other ones are a bit older. But it's still her kids. And the least I could do is help because I'm young and single and she needs a break. No, 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 that's not how it works at all. She's not entitled to your help. You can help her if you want. And, you know, in my opinion, it's nice to help family both back and forth. But <laughs> that's not that's not how it works. You can't, you can't just expect someone to be a free babysitter for an entire vacation and just be entitled about it. That's weird. I stood my ground on my decision and now she's calling our parents to get them involved. I am expecting a call from them any minute. Update. <laughs> Keeps going. I'm off for work now, so I can tell more what went down. I guess you could say it's over. My sister got our parents involved. They looked at my post and were absolutely horrified by the continuous influx of commenters. <laughs> but they were very angry with me that I posted here. But I told them that if they just listened to me to begin with, I would never have needed to. I mean, it's good to get a second opinion, but it's also like an anonymous story online. It ain't that deep. I am sick of the whole keep the peace mentality that sacrifices me to placate my sister. Then in turn went off on my sister and make a long story short the whole vacation has been cancelled. The hotel wasn't booked yet anyway. But my parents are arguing with my sister, my sister is blaming me and my nephews are crying because they aren't going to the beach. <laughs> my sister called me at lunch and basically implied I have no life, <laughs> which is why I have time to help. <laughs> Nothing like insulting someone to get them to do you a favor. You don't have a life anyway, OP. You're just a lonely loser, and you just sit in your, at home and play video games anyway. You can do this for me, you loser. <laughs> I recorded that and told our parents, and that's currently what they're fighting about. Small update. I wasn't going to update again, but here's a little more. Parents said they won't ever push babysitting on my nephews on me again, and have agreed that whatever last year was unfair to me. Right now, they're very angry with my sister for telling me I should help her because she thinks I have no life. 
<laughs> my sister is playing the victim, and my brother and I is basically saying nope to the whole mess and spending most of his time at work. Makes sense, yeah, I'll probably, probably do the same thing. Thank you to everyone who has commented. You made my day. Oh my god, that's so funny! And like, the update escalations, Jesus Christ! Don't get me wrong, I have friends and stuff that have had multiple kids at once, and it is a lot of work. Like, it completely changes the picture. Like, normally you're two parents with one kid at a time, or like one toddler at least, and then there's always one parent with free hands, you know? Or when you're dealing with yourself, you can carry the kid around in one hand and do everything else with the second, right? But with two kids, you're always full. You always have your hands full. So I can definitely see how having triplets would be very difficult and challenging, compared to only having one child. And part of that is something that you don't choose, of course, because you don't choose exactly how many babies pop out at once. But you still decided to have kids. You still decided to start a family. <laughs> That's not your brother's, like, duty to solve. Especially on vacation. You could have probably gotten a good amount of help if it was just reasonable to begin with. Like, oh, my 23-year-old brother should probably have a room of their own instead of spending all his time in a hotel room with, like, a bunch of six-year-olds, you know? <laughs> If it was just a bit more balanced, it probably would have been absolutely fine. But it just went way too far with personal space, man. God damn. Personal space and entitlement. What a combo. Am I the butthole for yelling at my girlfriend? Stop freaking eating. My M26 sister F23 runs a bakery business and she's been struggling lately to keep up with orders because she's been short staffed. She does a lot of orders for wedding cakes that require custard or marmalade fillings. And I offer to help her out by making these fillings at home and bring them to her so she has less work to do. Unfortunately, the past four times I made these fillings, my girlfriend F24 has literally dipped her fingers into the filling jar and contaminated them because, in her words, she just wanted to try some. I have tried explaining to her that she can't dip her fingers in and contaminate the entire batch because then I have to remake it. I said she should use a spoon and take some out if she wants to try so bad. But she just pouts and says that she likes using her fingers because it takes her back to her childhood. Today, I was trying to finish some chocolate custard to send it over to my sister really fast because she was running late on a wedding cake order for an important client. I told my girlfriend beforehand not to eat the custard and if she really wanted to, to please use a spoon. I get out of the shower and what do I see? She has her fingers in it again. I totally lost it, because this is the fifth time she blatantly disregarded what I said. And I yelled at her and told her to stop effing eating the food I'm making, because it's not for her, and she's contaminating it. She started crying and got mad at me for fat shaming. This has nothing to do with fat shaming. The reason is that you're putting your unwashed fingers into something you're selling for a client. This is like health regulation stuff. This has nothing to do with fat shaming. No one is even talking about fat shaming. He's even saying that it's okay for you to eat custard if you just use a spoon. That is the opposite. If like the only argument is the methodology of eating, then it's not fat shaming. You're oh my god, <laughs> what is this? Even though I made no comment on her weight and she has no history of weight issues or eating disorders. I know I was harsh, but she kept pushing my limits. Am I the butthole? If it's really the fifth time over, I don't think you're being harsh. I mean, she's the one who chose to keep doing, doing, doing until it escalated to having to yell at her to make her stop. You know, if they don't listen the first four times, then they can't really be upset when you yell at them the fifth time. Like, come on. Does she also wear a diaper and draw on the walls with crayons because it reminds her of her childhood? Not the butthole. Oh god, I feel so guilty for laughing at this. But that is so weird though. Like, why wouldn't she just use a spoon? Or like, <laughs> it's so weird. It's such a small thing to change. <sighs> Or if you really want to be, like, nostalgic, take a spoon, put it in a separate cup, and then you can dip your fingers in that cup as much as you want. That That's fine. What? Nah. Am I the butthole for giving my girlfriend a silent treatment because she killed a bug? <laughs> what kind of, like... Nonsense drama is this? Okay, let's dig into it. I'm here for some nonsense drama. I was hanging out with my GF in my room yesterday. She said she saw a fly crawling around my desk and asked me to kill it. I don't like killing bugs, so I said to just open a window and shoo it out. Before I could do so, my mom called me downstairs for something, so I told her I would be back and not to kill the fly. I was back five minutes later, and my girlfriend informed me she had crushed a fly and laughed. This upset me. I don't like killing bugs, and I explicitly told her to, and she still did it. I told her I was upset and she rolled her eyes and said that she didn't get the big deal since it's just a bug. Since then, I haven't felt like talking to her much. She got angry and texted me that I was being a butthole for being so upset and ignored her over a bug. Am I the butthole? <laughs> okay, I feel like killing bugs 
depends like on the context, you know. If she catches a beetle and she does some weird like sadistic stuff with like, you know, experimenting, removing body parts and stuff, yeah, that would probably make me uncomfortable, you know. It's weird. Why? It's for the purpose of pain. That That's like a different vibe to it. If it's a fly or a mosquito being annoying inside your house, smack it or let it out, whatever. Like, <laughs> there's a difference between just annoying bug, kashmak, and like, let me do these things for sadism, you know. Different context, different vibes. This ain't it. You are the butthole. This is the silliest thing I've read all day. I'm rolling my eyes just reading it. It's a fly. There are not only pests, they can actually spread disease. Please get over it. Not only is the argument juvenile, but so is doing the silent treatment. It's pathetic. Talk things out like grown adults. Jesus. <sighs> well, it's all about learning how to, how to communicate, I suppose. It's a good skill to have. Am I the bottle for calling my mom when my husband refused to listen to me? I, 26F, recently moved into my first home. I'm also four months prego with our first baby. The pregnancy has been very hard. I have horrible morning sickness. It reached a really bad point where I passed out, hit my head, and my doctor admitted me to the hospital for a week. Have you also noticed how, like, when you sort by, like, most popular or most controversial, in the subreddit, the controversial ones are always, like, really crappily written. <laughs> and the upvoted ones are written like a story with an actual, like, consistent timeline and stuff. <laughs> it, it, it's just a little thing I noticed. When I got home, my husband allowed his brother's family to move into two of our three bedrooms. They were evicted. I don't know why. One room was my office, was tossed into our room, papers everywhere. The house was a complete wreck. Trash, dirty clothes, used diapers. I started to cry. It was like a light flipped. My husband was no longer the same. My husband told me it wasn't that bad. My reply was, fine, then you should have the house cleaned up before I wake up. Completely exhausted, I fell asleep for four hours. I woke up to get a glass of water. I couldn't even. Every glass we own is scattered around the house. They didn't clean a single thing. I passive-aggressively started to pick out the dirty dishes and wash them. The following morning, I was trying my best to work when the kids were crying non-stop, banging on the walls and so on. Their mom was in her room for hours, ignoring them. When my husband came home, he was upset with me over how I didn't make his brother's wife feel welcome in our home <laughs> by helping with their kids when she was tired. <laughs> Then continued to complain how nothing was done while he was at work all day in the house. Yep, the same one he didn't clean. <laughs> you're, you're also the one who invited them without the consent of your wife, right? And they're not even taking care of their own kids. They're already, I'm assuming, living rent-free. How can they not take care of their own kids, be home all day, and also live rent-free, and yet you feel like you're not doing enough for them? What, what kind of, like, wannabe two-way street is this? This is not a two-way street. This is, like, a one-way street that is also sloping downhill. What the hell? This led to a fight where I told him, I am too sick to have company and they need to leave. To which he replied, they are his family and he won't kick them out. I started to cry again. I was beyond frustrated, exhausted. I physically couldn't do it anymore. I called my mom asking if I could stay with her. Telling her the whole story in front of my husband, who at this point was completely shocked, angry. Also, I could tell he wasn't sure what to do. I oh, doesn't like it when other people hear about it. Oh, yes, indeed. If it was so good, the thing you're doing, you wouldn't have a problem with people hearing about it, right? I also find it ironic that it sounds like they're his family, so he won't kick them out, but you won't listen to the family that you literally own the house with instead of the people, like, trashing it, you know? My mom came with my brothers. I have three older brothers. My mom super angrily told my husband, since your family can stay, so can we. My mom quickly took charge. I was sent to bed. My brother started cleaning, complaining loudly how disgusting my brother-in-law's family is, along with what a horrible husband my husband is for putting me through this while I'm sick. I got a text message from my mother-in-law calling me a butthole for not helping my husband clean up the house and putting my brother-in-law in an uncomfortable position by having my mom boss him around. <laughs> <laughs> that when you get put in an uncomfortable position by living for free and causing a mess in someone else's house. Ooh. <laughs> Very little empathy for that discomfort. Edited to add update. When my mother-in-law showed up, she was super angry outside. I could hear shouting, but couldn't understand what she said. Once inside, she was shocked. My house looked really bad. My brother-in-law lied to her about what happened. My mother-in-law quickly started to help my mom in the bossing mode. <laughs> my house is not just cleaned, but deep cleaned. <laughs> So, when everyone saw the situation, both mothers on both sides of the family just teamed up and went super boss mode to get the house in order. <laughs> that's kind of beautiful though, that's, pretty, that's a pretty beautiful ending to the story. 
My brother-in-law and his kids are now staying with mother-in-law. She didn't know about the eviction. My in-laws helped them financially a couple of months ago. My mother-in-law was not happy about it. Sister-in-law refused to come out of the bedroom. She would scream through the door, but that was about it until her family came pick her up. Last little bit, I did talk to my husband. He seemed very remorseful. I asked for some space and he's staying in a hotel. He asked to come by and talk to me tonight. And that's the weirdest part. Like, are they just stepping all over him? In that case, it feels so strange. And also, like, letting people stay with you for extended period of times can be really tricky. It can be really difficult, especially in these situations. And they also don't sound like they're particularly good house guests. They can barely manage their own kids and they don't even clean after themselves. Oof. That sounds like it would get on your nerves really fast. My mom and dad are here. Both moms felt like I should have someone here since I'm sick. Both moms have set up a meal plan where they trade off who will bring in dinner. It was my mother-in-law's idea. Thank you for all the advice. I truly appreciate it. A talk with my husband. Summed up since it lasted four hours. It was a hard talk. He is remorseful. Brother-in-law was only supposed to stay for a couple of nights, then leave originally he thought would be gone before I got home. He said he's tired and emotionally upset himself. When I originally passed out, my husband left to help a friend move. He came home and found me. He said he had no idea how long I was on the floor hurt. He was originally scared I had died. Since then, he had nightmares on top of dealing with his family drama. He admitted to dumping his frustrations onto me when it's not my fault. He begged me for another chance. The next step, we're still separated. He plans on staying at my brother's house in his casita. We are going to go marriage counseling and individual counseling. He asked if he could come when the home health nurse comes each night and to my doctor's appointments. I agreed to that. Update on brother's law. His wife admitted to having an affair. <laughs> she told him she got married too soon and doesn't want the responsibilities of being a mom anymore. I'm not sure what will happen with him and the kids, but I am shocked that she feels this way, especially with her kids. That is wild. Jesus Christ, that family. What an absolute bombshell. Wait, your mother-in-law called to fuss at you for involving your mother? I mean, at least they teamed up in the end, right? But god damn. It's disappointing to see that the husband went to the wife for complaining instead of like the guests that were living there for free that were supposedly being helped out, but also causing a mess. Like, even if you want to help someone, you still have to set up boundaries, because otherwise they just drag down everything around them. You know, if they got evicted for God knows what reason at the last place, and you don't have boundaries when they come to live with you, it can only really go one way, and it's not good. Am I the bottle for cancelling the entire vacation when I found out that my stepdaughters deliberately hid my daughter's passport to get her to stay home? What? That is so cruel. How old are them? Like small kids or something? I have been married to my wife, Beth, for five years. I also have a biological daughter named Jessica. 18? Wait, they're all like teenagers and adults? Oh my, I thought they were like, you know, little petty little eight-year-olds. And I also have two stepdaughters named Monica and Leah. They're 25 and 28. You have a 28-year-old that bullies their 18-year-old step-siblings by hiding their passports and papers so they can't come on vacations with you. A 28 Bruh. Both are single moms and live with us currently. There has been issues about my stepdaughters asking my daughter to babysit the kids. Jessica didn't have a problem with it at first, since this is what she does to earn money. But since her stepsisters don't pay her much, she would just refuse to babysit. Oh, they're doing like the whole family manipulation thing, I assume. Your time is worth less because we're family. I mean, you can, you can help people around you, right? But if you're dumping the babysitting on them every single day, then you should probably just pay them for it, you know? <laughs> We worked this out by having my wife take care of paying for the babysitting. All right, um, they, they should probably be responsible adults themselves at 25 and 28, but all right, I mean, I, at least at least the, the teenager gets paid enough. It sounds like a pretty chaotic household though, right? Like you have, you have a married couple that both have children on their own side. One has a teenager, the other two are adults, and both have kids of their own, but no husbands around. The, the, oh my god. I planned a family vacation for three days and everyone wanted to go. However, both Monica and Leah suggested that Jessica stay home and watch the kids since Beth doesn't want her grandkids to come. They said it's because the kids are used to Jessica and hiring another babysitter would cause issues. And also that Jessica isn't too fond of our destination, but it was obvious that Jessica wanted to go. They insisted and Beth offered to pay her double and there was just a lot of back and forth on this until I demanded they stop bringing it up. Okay, so they want the teenage stepdaughter to stay at home, not get vacation, and just babysit so they don't have to deal with their own kids. Wow. 
We were supposed to go last week, but when everybody had bagged their bags and it was time to go, Jessica found out that she didn't have her passport on her. We searched her bag and went home and searched there. Beth and my stepdaughters kept insisting that we go back to the airport or else we'd miss our flight. They insist that Jessica stay at home with the kids. Oh my god, so they hid the passport? No way, that's so evil. They even told the new babysitter to go home because she was no longer needed. I refused to go and kept searching for the passport till Monica admitted that she helped Leah hide Jessica's passport to get her to stay home with the kids. Oh my god, that's so evil. So you like let her pack her bags, think she's going on vacation, and I mean the tickets are already paid for. So you're also like wasting a ton of money on plane tickets and stuff. Jesus Christ, man. I was livid. I tried to get her to tell me where it was, but she said Leah had it. Leah denied, so I threatened to cancel the vacation, and that's when they gave it back. I decided to actually cancel the vacation and blew up at both of them and berated them. They stayed upstairs for a while, and Beth refused to speak to me and said that I punished my stepdaughters for worrying about their kids and wanting them to stay with someone they know. No, 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 no. They aren't innocent in this. They aren't like, oh my god, they were so good because they wanted families. You try to sabotage someone's vacation and like force the step sibling to be a babysitter when they didn't want to. And there was already an other babysitter there already taken care of. What are you doing? I got told I overreacted and ruined the trip for everybody. No, 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 no. They did that themselves. They ruined the vibe in this as a whole. I mean, if this is actually the point it got to, I would probably, you know, reconsider the relationship with that person as a whole. If this is the baggage they bring to the point that they go out of their way to hide your sensitive paperwork, to manipulate you into not going on vacations so you can like babysit kids that are not even yours. <sighs> fam, fam, life has enough problems, okay? You don't, you don't need this. Editing to mention that kicking my stepdaughters out isn't possible since my wife co-owns the house that we currently live in. Not the battle. To be honest, I would have kicked your wife and lazy no good stepchildren out right then and there and ended the marriage. If they were 12, I might understand this level of entitlement and immaturity, but late 20s and also parents themselves. And what the frick is with your wife? She should have roasted him for pulling that BS. There is no way the wife wasn't in on this too. She absolutely knew about the plan. OP needs to ditch all three of them. Especially if the wife defended them. Being like, they only wanted what's best. They were doing a good thing. It's not a good thing. How, in, in what world is this a good thing? They're both irresponsible parents. They manipulate the surroundings. They steal sensitive paperwork and try to manipulate to sabotage someone's family vacation. Like, bruh. <laughs> oh my god. Am I the bottle for not letting my miracle baby niece be my flower girl at my wedding? My 27F older brother and sister-in-law, both mid-30s, just welcomed their first child a year and a half ago, after years of trying. After many failed attempts, sister-in-law was told that she wouldn't be able to conceive due to a medical condition she has, but they finally got pregnant. Since having my niece, the baby has been the center of attention at every family event we've had since she was born. Birthdays, weddings, family get-togethers, you name it. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my niece, but it can get a little much when my sister-in-law goes on and on about how long they try to conceive, complications they've had, miscarriages they've had, etc. Like, a little too much information. Yeah, no, you definitely get past the point of too much information at some point. You can be happy about it and sharing the happiness without, like, going on and on. Many family members have commented on how it's a little bit excessive, but no one has said anything because they don't want to sound like a butthole. Anyway, I am getting married in the spring and my brother and sister-in-law approached me last weekend about having my niece be the flower girl. Now, my fiancé, 35M, has two children, 10M and 6F, from his previous marriage. His son is one of his groomsmen, while his daughter had asked to be our flower girl when we told them the news that we were getting married a year ago, as it's something she always wanted to do, so of course we said yes. That is so sweet though, that is so cute. So I explained this to my sister-in-law when she asked about my niece. She asked if my stepdaughter can just carry my niece with her. <laughs> I mean, the, the niece is gonna be like two years old by the time of the wedding. That sounds heavy for a six-year-old to carry around, but also, you know, it should probably be the six-year-old's thing that's actually part of this family and wants to be a part of like, you know, the, the parents getting married and that kind of stuff. Like, 
The niece doesn't have much to do with this, and they're also kind of too young to even remember it. I said I don't think she would be comfortable with that, considering that she's six. She then asked why I can't give that role to my niece, and allowed herself to carry my niece down as the flower girl. I said no, because I already promised my stepdaughter. She then started going off about my lack of effort to incorporate my niece is disgusting to her. I should honor her in some way, since I know how long and hard they tried for my niece. It's your miracle, baby. It's not their miracle, baby. But it is their stepdaughter. Which makes way more sense to have as your flower girl, especially since it's already planned, and especially since they're six years old, instead of like one and a half. Bruh. Now, I may sound like a butthole for this, but I kind of got fed up and snapped and said, Incorporate my niece how? By the time the wedding comes around, she'll be two years old. The entire family already knows your story about how long and hard you guys tried for her. What more do you expect me to do to honor her? She started crying. <laughs> Why? And said that I clearly don't love my one and only niece. <laughs> That is such manipulative BS. I mean, I would imagine, honestly, to like prioritize your own kids and stepkids at your own wedding over nieces. You know, that, what? And that I am letting her down. I said, of course I love my niece and obviously she is going to be involved in pictures and stuff, but I'm not going to let my stepdaughter down by giving my niece a role she's too young to remember anyway. Well, now my sister-in-law and my brother are pissed off with me for not letting my niece be a flower girl and are running around telling the rest of the family I don't love my niece. I'ma be honest, if they keep this up until the point this kid gets to the age where they actually remember things and, you know, start becoming a bit more independent, they're gonna be like the most entitled person ever. If you want to be happy that your child is like a miracle baby or whatever you want to call it, that's perfectly fine. But you probably shouldn't expect the world to treat them like a miracle baby because they're just gonna be incredibly entitled and it sounds like reality is just gonna hit them, like, really hard. This isn't good. This isn't good. My mom had been trying to stay neutral, but thinks my stepdaughter would understand if I explained to her I need to give that role to my niece. I am firm in my decision, though, and my fiancé is thankful I didn't let his daughter down. Am I the bottle for not allowing my niece to be the flower girl? Definitely not. No, it sounds like they're super entitled, and this sounds like a high road to, like, a super-duper spoiled child. Because it's their miracle baby, not the world's miracle baby. You know, what? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Not the butthole. She's their miracle baby, not yours. Exactly! The fact that they want you to disappoint your soon-to-be stepdaughter in order to make their daughter the focus of your wedding is absurd. Is really wildly entitled, isn't it? Am I the butthole for wearing a wedding dress at a wedding? Now, typically, that's a no-go, but let's see what the context is, shall we? So my friend, 20F, and I, 19M, have been friends for a few years and she recently got engaged. A week ago, I got a DM from her for a small costume party she was hosting as a celebration for her getting engaged. I asked if there was a theme, and she said there wasn't. I am a cosplayer, so I had a lot of choices. I didn't want to rock up in anime cosplay, so I thought it would be funny to go to an engagement party as the corpse bride. I arrived at her house yesterday, and everything seemed normal. A few people complimented my costume, and I was having a lot of fun. After 10 minutes, my friend's fiancé walked out in a black tuxedo and announced that this was actually their wedding. Oh, apparently my friend saw a video of someone doing this and wanted to do the same. He asked us all to go to the backyard for the ceremony to begin. I went straight to him, asked him if I should quickly go home and change my outfit and that I would be back before it started. He told me it was fine, since I didn't know it was the wedding. I trusted him and followed everyone outside. They got married and everything seemed good. The reception was just in their house again, so everyone just walked back inside and picked up where they left off. I tried talking to my friend and celebrating with her, but she kept making excuses to not talk to me. I assumed it was just because she was tired from the big day and wanted some time alone. I didn't bother her after that, and the party soon ended. I got home, and half an hour passed when my phone started getting notifications. I checked it, and it was my friend texting me. She was cussing me out and telling me how I ruined her wedding. I was really confused and asked what I did. That only made her more angry. She told me it was basic knowledge not wear a wedding dress to a wedding. Yeah, if you know it's a wedding, I mean, if you tell them it's a Halloween party, and then, like, you magically turn into a wedding, yeah, people are gonna wear random stuff that... <laughs> Dear God. You can't adhere to a dress code you don't know exists. 
I reminded her that I had no idea it was a wedding and that I asked her now husband if I should change and he said it was fine. She didn't respond, but I got a text from her husband. He asked why I would tell her he said it was fine. Oh no! Oh. I told him he said it was fine. He then said how I should have changed anyways and it's my fault that the two are now fighting over this. Or you know, he could have just said like, hey honey, it's no big deal. She's dressed up like a corpse. It's it's not it's not like it's it's that she stands out, you know? It it's technically a wedding dress, but she's not like dressed as a she's a zombie. She's like a zombie man. Like, come on, it's a Halloween party. I have tried texting her, I was sorry, and had I known, I wouldn't have done it. I woke up today and saw her and her husband have blocked me on everything. <laughs> what pathetic people! Oh my god, man! So, am I the bato for not changing out of the wedding dress when I found that it was actually a wedding? No, he told you it was fine, and he's absolutely spineless and can't be trusted. She's overdramatic and expects people to adhere to rules that she hasn't informed them exists, and expect people to wear or not wear specific things for a surprise wedding that is hosted at a costume party. Good riddance. Edit, I am a guy. I cosplayed as the character Emily from The Corpse Bride and had blue paint all over. Okay, so like I said, it's not even like, you know, a proper bride dress up. It's like very clearly a character. Like there's no way you would even be confused with a bride even though you're technically wearing a dress. <laughs> Dear God! I'm also Australian, and I have never heard of a costume party, meaning fancy. Everyone was dressed up in funny costumes. I mean, I've heard of, like, costume party as it can be dressed fancy and have, like, a mask, you know? But but I think that's that has, like, a different term to it, at least where I come from. It's something like, I don't know, like, cocktail costume party, some, something like that. But it has different words in Swedish, I'm not sure how it translates. But usually costume party, like Halloween party and stuff, is very specifically dress up in spooky funny stuff. Am I the bottle? I didn't attend my son's wedding. I instead spent the evening with his ex-wife. Ooh, that's a riveting title. It sounds like it could be the title of like a gossip magazine. That's, that's beautiful. Quick backstory. After graduating high school, my son moved three states away for college. At 19, he married a girl he met. I tried convincing him to wait because I personally felt he was too immature. They both dropped out and moved back here to his hometown. At 20, they had their first child, a beautiful little girl. 16 months later, my daughter-in-law gave birth to his second child, a little boy. After the first baby, my wife and I noticed the daughter-in-law wasn't happy. We both thought it was PPD related. Just after the second arrived, my son and his wife separated. She would bring the kids over for a visit. It was then she began unloading on us. I know there's two sides to every story, but considering I know my son, I believed her. I sat my son down numerous times to speak with him regarding his marriage. He refused to take responsibility, blamed her for everything even when I directly pointed out where he was the sole problem. They got into counseling. For a year, things were okay on the surface. Our daughter-in-law filed for divorce. My son, three days later, was Facebook announcing his new girlfriend. A month later, they were engaged. Oh, oh my god. My son had forced his then wife to become a permanent stay-at-home mom at the birth of their first child. She, of course, had no other family or friends here. She knew no one aside from us. Yet, you see, that's when it becomes kind of kind of crappy because it's perfectly fine if one person stays home and one person does like the the breadwinning and stuff you know that, that's perfectly fine people can structure their life how they want but the problem of course comes if the person dips and the person is stuck as a stay-at-home parent but also have lost years of experience they would have built up a career from that i can actually support the kids with so like ah it becomes really icky really fast depending on how it's done she, of course, had no other family or friends here. She knew no one aside from us. She had nowhere to go with two small children, especially since she moved back with him to his hometown, where she doesn't have a support network, and then he dumps her after convincing her to be a stay-at-home mom in his hometown. Man, he's, he's just ruining her prospect, isn't he? God damn. Unbeknownst to our son, my wife and I helped her financially and got her an apartment. That is really sweet, and it's also it also shows like the quality of people, I think, because it's still your grandkids, you know? I imagine they, they want to help out their grandkids. God damn. Before the divorce was even finalized, we received a wedding invitation. I made it clear to my son I would not be attending and they would not have my blessing. His mother told him she would see to it that I would attend. I stayed consistent in my decision. I also asked him not to bring his fiancée around our house out of respect for the mother of his children. I really hate it when people do this stuff, you know, because you can fall out of love, you can get married, realize it's not right, whatever. People grow apart sometimes, that's fine, it's normal, uh, how you deal with it is usually what matters, etc, etc. But 
Now there are kids in the picture. It's not just about you, what you want or your passion or love. There are literally people that you brought into this world that didn't decide their position in life. That's your responsibility, first and foremost, because you're the one who made them. Oh. The wedding happened on February 11th. The night before, my wife gave me the final push. I did not attend. Our daughter also not attending for the same reasons. My wife picked up our grandkids, got him dressed up and attended the wedding. My daughter and I decided to spend the evening with his ex. I couldn't imagine her sitting alone while her kids attended their father's wedding. This is like so cruel, man. Oh my god. She was taken aback that I didn't end up attending his wedding. We took her out to distract her mind. I just wanted her to know she will always be considered family to us. My daughter also made a joke they can drop the in-law status and just be sisters now. She was very tearfully grateful. I just realized how badly she needed our support and specifically on that night. The next morning, my son called to tell me how much of a horrible father I am for not attending his wedding. A few days later, he caught wind that I spent the wedding evening with his ex. He said it was the ultimate form of betrayal, and further, myself and his sister would have to earn a relationship with him on his terms only. <laughs> if you want to be with me in any context, it's only my terms. Yeah, this, this speaks like a totally balanced person, two-way street relation. Hell yeah. So my son saw the post. I had sent my daughter the link yesterday so she could read the comments. This morning she texts me at work. Dad, you went viral. Lol. But anyways, he sent screenshots of the post and all my comments to his mom. He also told her, he's dead to me now. <laughs> Time will tell if he means that. I'm sure he will see this update too. For that reason, I'm positively certain the second he needs another cash loan, I won't be dead anymore. His mom told him, Your children have to be our number one priority. They're not just some disposable items you can leave behind when one chapter of your life closes. Maybe one day he will understand this. The kids is always what make these kind of situations very yucky. If he has like a bad breakup and is a douchebag, it's not nice. But, you know, people move on, that kind of stuff. You know, it's not the worst thing in the world. But when you insist on having kids, making your partner a stay-at-home mom, moving back to your hometown when they're outside of their home network, and then dumping them, and, like, remarrying someone else before all the paperwork is even finished, like, fam, fam, I have a really hard sympathizing with just the, like, falling out of love and wanting to be happy logic, because you're just a tornado in everyone's life you touch, including your kids, it seems. Like, goddamn! Am I the butthole for making a joke about my wife's intelligence? My wife has an extremely big heart and cares for everyone around her. She always tends to see the absolute best in people, which leads to people taking advantage of her. She's been robbed because of her optimistic outlook on life. My wife is a timid type, never the confrontational type, not the sharpest tool in the shed. Okay, this doesn't sound, uh, this doesn't start off good. I have a very good friend who I'm referring to as Stan for anonymity purposes. Stan and I have been friends for a very long time, and he's an extremely intelligent man with a PhD and a professor at an esteemed university. When restrictions eased, Stan came to visit me. My wife is very interested in Stan's line of work. When I introduced Stan to my wife, she began to ask him questions all related to his career. He answered them politely, but it felt more like an impromptu interview than two friends catching up when my wife was around. She's just curious about the interview, like... <laughs> Talk about criticizing everything, like, you're victim-blaming her for being robbed, you're saying, like, she's naive and timid and not sharp, and then she can't talk to your friends without making an interview, like... What? I told my wife that her fascination with Stan's career could possibly be making him very uncomfortable. Why then? Then he can probably just tell her, or just change the subject. She apologized and promised to not ask questions and only speak when spoken to? Is she also gonna live in the basement? I invited Stan and his wife to a friendly dinner, and Stan's wife complimented my wife on her multilingualism, and my wife could not stop gushing about it when they left. That's a cool thing. Knowing languages is cool. She's very insecure in the presence of very intelligent people, and getting a compliment from an extremely intelligent person, especially a linguist, must have boosted her self-esteem. Good! It's good! She, she got a compliment from someone she respects. I mean, I don't know why you're twisting into her being insecure. You can, you can respect people and value their opinion, input, and compliments without being insecure. Bruh. I politely asked her to stop talking about my friends, but she started rambling about how someone saying you sound like a native is a very meaningful comment to her considering a bunch of other factors. That is very generous, yeah. Like, it warms my little achy-wakey heart when people sometimes can't tell I'm Swedish because a lot of my accent has disappeared over the years, you know? That's a huge compliment! It's like, fam, you speak English as good as people who've done it their whole life. That's a massive compliment, fam! Take it! Absorb that shit. 
I made a harmless joke about why she's so surprised about someone complimenting her intelligence is because she's not that intelligent. I mean, after everything leading up to this, this is one of those times where it's like, this is sort of a joke, but not really, you know? It's like when bullies say they're just joking, you know? It, it's not really just a joke. Instead of laughing along, she got offended. I wonder why. And I try to explain myself by saying no normal person would keep talking about one compliment that a stranger gave to them, and that I knew that she was obviously insecure about being in the presence of very intelligent people. Have you even read the memes? Like, the, the memes online are that, ah, oh, a man gets a compliment, and we, like, put it on a shelf, and we remember it for the entirety of our lives. You know, that's literally a meme about men specifically, which, which is kind of, like, relatable, you know? <laughs> Why, why wouldn't you want people to carry compliments with them, especially regarding things they have obviously worked very hard on? Fam, come on! And the compliment is acting as compensation. Mm. She is very upset with me. I've tried to have an adult conversation with her, but she's not listening to me. So am I the butthole? <laughs> you're, you're telling her that she can't be happy about a compliment. Because if she is, she's compensating for being stupid by putting too much value on a compliment. Yeah, this is those kind of situations where this is like, haha, a joke, but it's not really a joke, is it? Edit, I get it. I'm a butthole. I'll apologize and try to fix this. I think the core issue here, based on this short text and as far as I can tell, is that you don't really respect her. That's the core issue. How you talk about someone when they are not around is a pretty key indicator. And you've said that she's stupid, she's timid, she overcompensates with compliments. I mean, if you respected her and valued what she was good at, you would say, that, oh yeah, she's amazing at languages. Like, pe people think she's a native speaker in, in X, Y, and Z languages because she's so she's so fluent in them. You know, th that would be what someone in this situation would say if they genuinely respected a person and was impressed by their achievements. Instead, going on this weird rant about how it's compensation and if you take this compliment to heart, it means you're really insecure and it... What? What? I think you need to have a conversation about if this relationship is actually healthy. Because, like, being with someone that you don't respect is not good for either of you. Like, Jesus Christ, and especially for her. Like, a partner is supposed to lift you up, fam. <laughs> not do whatever you're doing right now. You're just insulting her both behind her back and to her face. Yeesh! You are the butthole. All you did was poo talk your wife the entire post. Don't have your wife be involved with your friends if you want her to sit there and be silent, you butthole. Yeah, that, that's also a thing. Like... <laughs> Only speak when you're spoken to. You're stupid. You're incompetent. You take, you, you, you're take. you timid with intelligent people. It can't just be that you value someone's opinion. It's that you're timid and stupid and insecure. Yikes. What the hell, man? Am I the battle for saying I told you so to my obese friend? My 26F friend Natalie, 25F, is obese. Not morbidly, but she's around 180 pounds at 5'4". That's obese in a concerning way. Usually I let people live their lives, but this is my best friend and I want the best for her health. I have asked her to join me at the gym multiple times, but she always says no to hang out with her boyfriend. She is complacent because her boyfriend is an attractive man who has muscles and all that jazz. I don't know how he became attracted to Nat, but I am worried she will just think she can be fat all the time and not have to worry about her weight. Over the months, it's becoming worrying because I see her eating more bread and pasta. Okay, based on the tone of this, it is possible to be concerned about someone's health that you care about. But honestly, I think I see it more often that someone uses the concern to just be kind of mean about someone's appearance. Like you just said that I don't know how this person could possibly like my friend because they're fat. That doesn't sound like someone who's concerned. That so sounds like someone who's trying to justify putting their friend down. Th th that's not how you speak about someone you're genuinely concerned and care about. Here is where I might be the butthole. I uh, like not the previous paragraph, okay? Uh, we were hanging out at the park near the mall and Natalie was joking around with her boyfriend. They both started running across the park until Nat got tired and then tripped. They were both like, oops, but I took the opportunity to say, ha ha ha, this is why I told you so. Exercise more, then you won't trip and fall. You, tri you can trip and fall all the time, especially if you're frolicking in a park, what? I meant to say it as a joke. Yeah, but you see, again, this is that kind of joke that isn't really a joke, you know? But Natalie said she's had enough of my comments, cussed me out and called me a butthole. Her boyfriend called me one too. I don't understand. Don't you? But anyway, we went back to the mall with them both giving me the cold shoulder. How am I wrong for wanting my friend to be healthy? Am I the butthole? 
Uh, Jesus Christ, a few things. 180 pounds, 5 feet 4, is overweight, but is no way scientific means considered obese in a concerning way. I think when I punch this into like a freaking BMI calculator, it's 30.9. But but BMI is also like hardly a perfect measurement. It's uh, it's heavily criticized and for good reason. I don't know, this just doesn't sound like a friend who's concerned in the least, fam. Honestly. You don't need to police her weight or fitness. Two, the way you talk about her relationship is horrendously rude. Like you seem to think that only a conventionally attractive and fit guy can't rationally be attracted to a bigger girl. That's really, really poopy of you. I mean, what do you think? Fat people can only date other fat people? There's nothing notable about a muscular guy dating a chubby girl. It happens. Get over it. Unless you're into her boyfriend and want him for yourself or something. <sighs> ooh, ooh, might be onto something. Ooh, I taste juicy drama. You pay way too much attention to what she eats. It's not the end of the world that she likes bread and pasta. No good friend should police food for others. Monitoring meals is a painfully unhealthy behavior. What the hell does tripping have to do with physical fitness? I am 5'8 and 150 pounds. I go to the gym multiple times a week, eat well, and gasp, sometimes trip. Do you want to tell me that I am unhealthy, Limal? In summation, you're the butthole. Your entire attitude towards your friend is awful, and I hope you get a clue. I think this whole thing just ties in so beautifully to the whole aspect of people pretending to be concerned so they can just justify being mean. You know, I'm not being mean or judgy, I'm just concerned, says like no one who's actually genuinely concerned ever. Dear God. Well, laddies, lasses and lasses, I do hope you enjoyed this beautiful video and the bingo card <laughs> No, but we should play more bingo in the near future. I enjoy playing bingo. Let me know if we should do some bingo on this kind of video. That will be very fun to experiment with. Other than that, I hope an amazing rest of your day. You're wonderful, beautiful bean. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Mwah.